the chassis. Due to the lift arm's leverage, the space in the front axle area was very limited. So it was clear right away that I didn't have the space there for a steering system. So the steering had to be a rear steering, just like the big model, giving the ride an unrivaled agility. The wheels are go-kart rims with rain tires. The rain tires with their soft rubber compound and with their rough thread provide better traction on loose ground. The small size of go-kart wheels has a couple of advantages. With their small diameter we can build very compact rides. And a small diameter also means less torque for the transmission elements avoiding a skipping belt and allowing a 3D printed plastic differential. The cart wheels also have a very cool look and due to their great width and a flat track they don't sink in on grass, sand or mud like in Fento's narrow 8 inch universal wheels. At first I planned to drive the front axle with my old 3D printed spur gear set. Trying this concept in our garden was a lot of fun, but unfortunately I had insufficient space for the motor between the lift arms elements. So I ended up with a conventional bell drive with 1 to 1 ratio, with the motor located well accessible in the footrest area. Although the ride is quite slow, I learned from the forklift project that having a disc brake installed makes perfectly sense not only for stopping, but also to prevent the ride from rolling away on sloping ground. For the actuation of the brake, I used the handbrake lever that I installed in the footrest area as brake pedal, so the driver's hand could stay at the joysticks all the time. The size of the driver's cabin is optimized for my two youngest kids with 5 and 8 years of age, but even grown-up persons like myself can ride well in it with the knees and the head sticking out to the side and to the rooftop that I left open for just that reason. That doesn't only look funny, but is really great fun to ride. The 3D printer differential. In one of my previous videos I had introduced the function and the making of my first DIY Infento compatible differential. Unfortunately it used steel gears that no one could buy and an SLS printed nylon housing that no one could print. So I decided to start a full redesign with the premise that the whole differential, including the gears, can be printed with a cheap FDM 3D printer. And this is the result. And after a few design iterations, it finally works reliably. For the material of this diff, I went for PETG for not melting my diff on a hot summer day. The crown gears are as large as possible, so the teeth see the smallest possible tangential force. The teeth are connected at their inner and outer side that prevents them reliably from sharing off. In the center is the common hexagon profile for the Infento 19mm hexagon axles. In some places I use standard bearings, bolts, nuts and straight pins, so in principle anyone is able to replicate this diff. The differential's overall diameter is so small that it can also be used with the smaller Infanto 7 inch wheels. On both sides there is a 5 hole pattern so that you can directly fit an Infanto pulley to the housing. Though possible I do not recommend to fit a brake disc to the diff's housing because I am afraid the torque would get too high for the gears. For using this diff in an Infanto ride, we have to install two half axles, each half axle supported by two bearing blocks because the differential cannot create a rigid connection between two axles. 
So what is my practical experience with the diff? On an even and paved road, the differential works inconspicuously, whereas on uneven or slippery ground, the ride comes to standstill as soon as one of the two wheels is in the air. We must not forget that the wheel loader's frame is very stiff. It has no suspension nor a pendulum axle, so only a few centimeters of uneven ground is enough to lift one wheel off the ground. I must confess that a rigid axle and one wheel drive would have worked just as well if not even better. Like on a real off-road car, the only way to get lucky with a diff is with a self-locking degree. That means under load some 30-50% to of the torque is still transmitted to the other wheel. Maybe I will work on this topic in the future, but I am afraid it will make this simple design a bit more complex. The other custom parts. A few other custom parts are worth mentioning. When designing new parts, my goal is to keep the parts as universal as possible for being able to reuse them for new projects. The trailer that I built for our village's Thanksgiving procession has a black barrel that I used previously as steam boiler on a locomotive. The rims were the front wheels of my buggy project and the tires are wheelbarrow tires I initially bought for the tractor. On the chassis I used a part that I call corner joint. Its function is similar to an L joint but in addition it is able to connect another profile in the third dimension. The kart rims and their 3D printed adapters were initially introduced for the go-kart but do a good job here as well. The red panels of the rear compartment are just cut and bent from Infanto cardboard boxes that I kept stowed away in the corner of my basement for just this purpose. This rear compartment is mostly empty but there is an element hidden in it that I missed in a couple of earlier occasions. I call it the node element. It is basically a cross with adjustable angle. It connects two parallel profiles in a diagonal manner and is only 40 mm high. As mentioned earlier, most of the models presented here are free for download on Thingiverse, but if you should miss one model, please leave a note in the comment section to remember me uploading it. The Conclusion Believe it or not, but now we have covered everything. And yes, you are right when you say that was an absolute effort for a kid's vehicle. And I say yes, you are right, if all that counts is the final result. But as we say in Germany, the way is the goal. Sometimes I tend to lose myself in detailed topics, but getting something to work is kind of challenging for me. Life is a continuous learning process. And daily business just bores me. In a final word, I would like to say thank you again to you, Werner and Enrico from Schlosserei Jung for making the shovel and letting me do the interesting footage in your workshop. Well done guys! May this video help you to awaken the interest of the next generation for your profession. Alright guys and girls, in case you like this video, I am pleased if you like and share my video to your friends and subscribe to my channel for not missing the upcoming videos about Infanto compatible elements or Infanto builds like garbage truck, a racing sim, an e-bike or a ride with a 2-speed transmission. Ok, see you again in a few weeks. Until then, take care and happy building!